Hi, I'm Doug Fairbrands, and what I'd like to do right now is show you one of the newest breakthroughs in tractor trailer aerodynamics. Now, the first thing I'd like to explain is the phenomenon of wind resistance and drag on a vehicle. And then the second thing I'd like to do is show you how this can be reduced through natural or passive ventilation. Wind resistance and drag is, is created when a vehicle starts moving down a highway, it starts pushing a large amount of air in front of it. A car pushes five and a half metric tons of air in front of it for every mile that it rolls down the highway. So uh, a tractor trailer is going to have a, a much more significant uh, wind resistance on it. Um, and now this high pressure air on the front of the vehicle starts rolling down, comes down to the back of the vehicle and falls into the vacuum in the back and as it falls around the corners it creates a uh, counterclockwise vortices back here and these are called as the air is coming down the sides of the vehicle these are called shear boundary flow uh, layers now as they come down to the back of the vehicle they fall into the vacuum or the low pressure area on the back of the vehicle barometric pressure is uh, measured from space to the ground now, if this vehicle is sitting still at sea level, and there's 29 millibars of air pressure on all sides of the vehicle as it's sitting still, and uh, as it starts to move forward, the air pressure starts to build in front of it where it's pushing the air. But on the back of the vehicle, the barometric pressure remains the same, 29 millibars. Now, the quality of a vacuum is measured by how closely it approaches a perfect vacuum. So in this case, any lower pressure variance will constitute what is considered a vacuum. Now, the way to reduce the drag on the vehicle is by directly connecting the high pressure on the front or sides of the vehicle through a, through a venting duct or tube or air channel, as we call it. And studies strongly suggest that there's a stronger interaction to, to uh, reducing drag if the vent outlet is in a closer proximity flow layer reattachment and um, you have a smoother transition of air coming around the sides as this uh, high pressure is reduced and increases the base pressure and thus reducing the drag and wind resistance now, on the vehicle. As the air pressure builds on the front of a tractor trailer, you can put a tube or vent in the front bumper and take this high pressure air and direct it into the tractor trailer gap. As there's a lot of drag, as the air starts to roll into this low pressure area and hit the corners of the trailer. And you put that tube from the front bumper, picking up the high pressure air and flowing it into the centrally located low pressure area. And uh, as barometric pressures tend to adjust, nature abhors the vacuum, this high pressure air is going to seep this lower pressure into the tube. And the high pressure starts to expand in here. And uh, you have a smoother transition of air as it goes by the sides of the trailer. Duck in the corner of the trailer and the air can flow through the wall of the trailer and down into the back door of the trailer into the centrally located low pressure area and this hot this this air pressure starts to expand out like this and meets out what what air pressure is left coming down the sides and um, as this expands outwards it, this air instead, this, this high pressure instead of falling in like this, just flows smooth past the back of the truck, reducing that drag or turbulence. You can have this venting duct, this integral design that uh, we hope to be building into new tra trailers in the near future. This venting duct can be anywhere from the front of the trailer all the way down. You can have an inverted duct or a divergent duct uh, in the trailer and it flows down and out the back of the vehicle. Now you've noticed the tubes that I've got on here. These are apparatus or devices. These are add-on devices. The tube is on the side of the trailer. The inlet and it picks up that high pressure air and then the tube 
and I've had this on real working trailers, real time working conditions, and that tube comes up the back of the, the back door or channeling device. It can be in any kind of design, made out of any kind of material, uh, any kind of shape. And there's a coupling device where the door opens and closes and the door swings open alongside the trailer and there's uh, there's no problem with loading docks and no driver intervention involved. Uh, another method of doing this is another way I did this was I put a three inch tube over the top of my tandems, my axles, and I had the tube underneath the trailer where a lot of that high pressure is in front of these wheels or hitting the wheels this picks up that high pressure and flows it right back to the DOT bumper the coupling device and right back out through the centrally located as close to the center of the vehicle as possible <clears throat> 